Welcome to my world. With my host, we couldn't do it without him. The Hall of Famer himself. Oh, my God. That's right. The Podfather, Conrad Thompson. What a weird sentence, man. What a weird sentence. Drew's on the other foot this morning as we, we get cranked up here. So, look, I know you've probably told this story a few times around, but for specifically the My World listeners, and I know we're late to the party or kind of late to the party, uh, but um, I know you hold My World as a special place in your heart. But, no, it all started back with Brother Love. But can you tell us the award? Can you tell us a little bit about the award? You do better explaining, much better explaining than I do. But, no, I'd love for the My World listeners to hear exactly what went down. Uh, I'm not asking you to give yourself your own flowers, but tell us about your weekend. Well, I can't believe this is a real thing, but uh, myself and some of my friends and family traveled to Waterloo, Iowa, and uh, we got to spend uh, some time there at the Dan Gable Museum, which is unbelievable in Waterloo. Uh, they've got, and I don't know, have you been, Jeff? Have you been to that museum before? I have not. Dude, it's unbelievable all the stuff that's in there. They've got one of the first wrestling rings that was ever used on television, and it's tea tiny. I mean, maybe eight feet across. I'd be surprised if it's 10. Oh, wow. But I actually took a little private tour with, uh, what, with, with some celebrities like brother love and JBL and Jerry Briscoe. And it was amazing to just walk around and hear all the stories and history that's in there. Uh, some of the hall of fame plaques are just unbelievable, but they've got like, you know, uh, Dr. Death's ring robe and, uh, the little thing that Roddy Piper wore on the front of his kilt and the old school AWA tags and. Uh, a version of the belt buckle that you got whenever you became the NWA heavyweight champion. And they bronzed one of Harley's boots. I mean, just amazing, really wow. cool stuff. And then there's all the actual amateur wrestling stuff. And I was fortunate enough to go to the basement and see the stuff that they would rotate. So that's everything else they have just that's a treasure cool. trove of stuff. I held an actual Olympic gold medal in my hand. Like how many people can say, no they've way. Been? yeah, it's unbelievable. The stuff they got there. If you're ever in Waterloo, Iowa, I highly recommend you check it out. And I didn't realize it, Jeff, but the day before I took that tour, I ate breakfast at the corner of a diner there outside on the patio. And one block up from that diner is the original hotel where all the promoters got together in 1948 to create the NWA. So that hotel where the NWA was created in 1948, right there. And then of course, Saturday night, man, what a banquet. It was, a uh, I didn't know what to expect. I had never been before. It may have been my first visit. It won't be my last visit. And I was lucky enough to go in with quite a class, including Haku and Les Thatcher and Gary Albright. Uh, but unbelievably, I received the Gordon Soley Award. Uh, wow. For in wrestling broadcasting, of course, as you're probably thinking to yourself, self, has Conrad <laughs> ever called a match? I mean, I guess technically I did one for oh, the yeah. NWA a few years ago. But no, that's not what it was about. They said, hey, we need to adopt this new media concept. The world is changing. And and so I guess, you know, I'm the first podcaster in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. And I don't belong to have that award. Gordon Soley was the first recipient. JR is the second recipient. I'm the third recipient. It was unbelievable. Uh, and, and, and I was fortunate enough to have Bruce Pritchard make an extraordinary effort to be there to induct me. I can't believe that that's a sentence, but it is one that I'm proud of. And, uh, I look forward to going back next year, man. I'm going to make it an annual thing. Every chance I get, I, you know, congrats. I, 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 words don't put it. I am so happy. So proud for you. Tell me who's in this, the two years before Jr. So it's called the Gordon Soley award. Right. And there's only been three recipients, Gordon Soley, Jim Ross, and now myself, which that's is just my cotton partner. Dude, I mean, think, think about that. That I didn't know that till you just spilled that out. Wow, you and Jr. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I was so happy to have the opportunity, and just thrilled to be there. And I, saw I highly that. recommend that you go out of your way to become a member um, and get a lifetime membership. As I understand it, it's only two hundred and fifty dollars, not two hundred fifty dollars a year, just one time. I, I'm going to become a lifetime member, and hope that a lot of other folks will as well. And, uh, yeah, dude, I went in there with Bill DeMont and Haku and Les Thatcher and Gary Albright. And, uh, I mean, it was, it That's was something cool. else, man. Whose gold medal did you, did you hold? 
you know, I'm not sure. I'll be honest. It was in a basement. Yeah. And they let me, they let, they, you know, I guess they trusted me and I appreciated that. But I, I asked if we could see it and they said, yeah. And they just cut me loose, man. So I got to see, I don't know what I'm allowed to or not allowed to post pictures <laughs> of, but I'll send you some privately. But there was a photo from like the 20s or no, not the 20s. It was 1952. And it was a giant, I mean, like as big as this wall unit behind me photograph of a wrestling ring where they set some sort of all time record over 12,000 fans there with a record gate of over $25,000, which means they were $2 tickets. Yeah. Yeah. But what was cool is they had, even in the cheap seats, people are wearing suits, Jeff. I'm talking about the upper deck. They're suited and booted with a tie and everybody is looking back at the camera and that looking back at the camera I'd never seen before, but instead of everyone looking at the wrestling ring, everyone in the arena is looking at the camera. It was something I've never seen before. It was wow. crazy. I mean, I would love to just have an unlimited amount of time digging around down there. Cause they've just got boxes of yeah. old binders and stuff. And there's no telling like what kind of booking sheets and notes and magazines and things are in there. It is a, a worthwhile venture. Highly recommend that any wrestling fan check it out. That is so cool. You know, it takes, uh, I've got a thousand things going through my mind, but were you just talking about a treasure trove of, of stuff like that? It takes me back to the, one of the first couple of times I used to go to a wrestling office, Nick Goulas over mm -hmm. on Eighth Avenue in Nashville, uh, in the gosh. So Conrad, I'm born 60. So I could not have been eight, nine, 10 years old, but going in there and you just kind of see different, obviously in my mind, they were all black and white. Maybe they weren't black and white, but just kind of thinking about the history and then, uh, you know, riding to Louisville with, uh, my grandmother, Tini, she didn't drive, so always had you know some uh, somebody driving us, um, and a lot of times we'd have people. But she would sort of go into history lessons and tell her version of funny stories and stuff like that. But in my mind, as a little kid, my imagination you just kind of just go back to the history you just brought up. That's so cool, man. Um, now you see it on TV and. We're headed to Wembley and a hundred thousand fans, but, uh, or 80,000 fans. Look, I've already grown at 20, but no, but you, you just think back through the years where wrestling came from. God, that's a, a TV wrestling ring. Cool. Anyway, Conrad, uh, I could not wait to get this podcast started today because, uh, I just wanted you to tell the story to the, my world listeners. And I know you've got multiple podcasts and Bruce being there was special. And I followed it online, like a little kid, JBL, uh, posted, a nice pick. Anyway, all of it. Very good. Hats off, pal. Hats off, partner. It's, uh, it's I it was a great it. honor. I, 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 um, podcast lineage. I just, uh, I'll be honest, man. I take a look at, and I'm not saying this to, I'm not saying this tongue in cheek at all, but I take a look and I'm like, how do I belong in this hall of fame before guys like Eric Bischoff? He's not in there yet. Or yourself. You're not in there yet. Like, how is that possible? Um, but you know, I, uh, I told Mr. Briscoe when he first called and told me, you know, what was going on, I said, well, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't think I deserve it. And he said, well, it was unanimous. So you deserve it. And I was like, well, listen, I appreciate that, but I just, I feel weird about this. I don't, I don't know what to say. He goes, you say yes. When somebody calls and asks you to the hall of fame, you say yes. <laughs> but I thought at first when he was asking me if I would come, I was like, yeah, how much are tickets? Yeah. Like, you know, I've always wanted to go. So. It's so cool to, to have that opportunity and to be recognized. And I'm, I'm humbled and honored and grateful for the opportunity. And I can't believe that I get to do this. You know, part of my speech was, uh, which I didn't write anything. Cause Bruce said, no, we're going to do this backwards from a show. You don't write anything. I'll do all the research and I'll do all the work. And then you just respond to me instead of the other way around. And I was okay. like, okay, we'll do that. Uh, but I said, man, if you would have told me when I was eight years old, that I was going to grow up and get paid to talk about wrestling and be best friends with brother love and Mary Ric Flair's daughter <laughs> roll tide. I mean, that's pretty cool. So, and Hey, we're excited to be here with you hold guys. On, so, so hold on. Is there any way we, we, any, is this speech online? Can we get a copy? It can, is there uh, it's not online? No, I'm going to work on all that. I'm going to level up some of that stuff. 